stop the press. I don't even I don't even know what to do with that right now. Stop everything. So kind of push it off to the side and pretend it's not there. That was an experience. This is actually a pre-existing condition that we're just finding out about now. You ready for this? Now that it's our problem. I don't know if you're ready for this. Does that mean we can finally finish this job? <laughs> Definitely burning a little rich. All right, folks, hold the phones, stop the press, stop everything. It's a moment you didn't even know you were waiting for, but we've been waiting for it for months. Waiting for this car to come in, waiting for parts to come in. Clear the schedule. You ready for this? I don't know if you're ready for this. It's like deja vu all over again. Did you think they say it was actually gonna happen? No. I thought the summer was gonna go far away and then it was gonna be, oh, hey, we're now worried about snow on the ground when we're trying to get this back to you. It's gonna be famous, Joe. One day. One day it'll be famous. Nope. Scoop what this is, customer purchased a vehicle. This is a replica of like a 1963-ish Austin Healey 3000. Uh, it's on a custom frame with a 5.0 Mustang drivetrain. There isn't a whole lot of space for belt drive on this or a rack, so they opted for just manual steering. I mean, it's a light car, but this this gentleman who just wants that power steering, so it's a lot easier to get around, especially in tight parking spots. So this one, we are again doing the electronic power steering conversion, which is gonna be putting an electric motor in the steering column. And he wants to convert this to automatic. He wants to just be able to put it in drive and drive with the wife. However, just from sitting while waiting months for parts, um, stopped running. Pretty sure the fuel pump's dead. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of testing. So that's the first thing I have to do is get this thing back running before I start messing with things to make sure that anything I've done post didn't affect it not starting and running. So it's basically just like working on a Ford Mustang. So here we go. Yeah, a Ford Mustang that somebody has hacked rerouted, tapped in, and messed with all the wiring. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. So, here I am starting with the power steering conversion. I'm gonna clean up a couple of things that were in my way, like the clutch pedal and stuff we don't need anyway, just to clear the space, but let me show you what I'm talking about when I say rat's nest of wiring. <coughs> so this was built in like the 90s by a custom car company. And then, being the fact that it's 30 years old, how many other people have added things and tapped in and, and done stuff and put relays and aftermarket fuse boxes and... All I want to do is take this, stick it somewhere up in here, and have power steering. So, let's, let's get this column ripped out. So I can make some cuts, see what stuff's gonna fit, and then see what I'm gonna have to do to... I, I, don't, even, I don't even know what to do with that right now. That's just... Kind of push it off to the side and pretend it's not there. All that talk and all that worry about custom wiring and rat's nests and whatnot, and it just turns out it's just the burnt fuel pump. So, probably ran it a little bit too low, burnt the fuel pump out, place this, we'll be all set. So. On to the fun stuff. The fun stuff. Well, 
Not surprising. I don't even have the column out and already ran into our first problem. This rod right here is a linkage that goes from the actual block cylinder and mechanically moves the switch in here for the ignition switch. And of course, this piece right here is exactly where I want to cut out to put my power steering unit. Meanwhile, so I don't lose time, and also my mind, uh, we're going to be switching gears to transmission. So, already have the shifter out, so we're going to yank the tranny, start doing that conversion while waiting for parts just so we can keep on going. Well, folks, progress is progress. So, we ended the day taking out all the old transmission stuff. Manual transmission, clutch, bell housing, drive shaft, all that jazz. So now, we are ready to throw the automatic stuff in. Also, might have an idea on the column so we don't have to switch it to a newer style and change all the electronics. So, let me show you what we got going on with that. Got the steering shaft obviously out of the vehicle. Completely disassembled. So first thing we had to do was cut it. Look at that, it's magic. That was easy. And the way this operates is this little set screw and this D shaft. We want the set screw to be seen through that little hole right there. So, so we have our measurement for the set screw. So next step, chop this so it fits in there. Well, I can't undo that, so let's hope this works. And this all gets mounted onto this. Motor is mounted, adapters are in. So now we're just gonna put this back into the car so I can take a measurement on exactly how much of this piece I need to make it out the firewall to the rest of the steering and we're done. Sounds easy. Yeah. Well, we're back in the car now, and I had wanted to get a length on this steering shaft, but first things first, need to cut away a lot of this support bracing up here, so that way we can take this motor, clock it up into this cavity up here, where it's not going to be hitting your knee or anything like that. Let's uh, take some of this material, cut a nice little notch, see what it looks like. Here you have it full mock-up of the entire electronic power steering system with the shaft. Let me show you what it took to get to this point. Well folks, this is it in all its glory. You already saw me disassemble this steering shaft. They provide you with a U-joint for the other end. Now, outside the car, the steering shaft to the rack was actually keyed and I need to go from this double D shaft so I welded that. This is a slip joint. So that way it's telescopic and go in and out and easy for install. I just welded this so it's still a little warm. So that way the shaft goes to the middle, bolt holes line it up, keeps the orientation and everything. The factory bracket, nice and solid. Well, I decided to get a little fancy and paint it since, you know, the whole interior is like light tan. So I just had some, some tan paint. Now it's on the electronics. And that's gonna have a whole lot of fun because you didn't already see. Damn! Check out all this mess. I've got a plan. I didn't have the time, patience, nor was I getting paid to clean it all up. However, I could cover it. So, I present to you the final rendering of the power steering unit, as well as everything all nice and covered underneath there. This is all that was there before. Built this whole panel, cover up all those wires so your knee doesn't catch them, you know, hook anything. Sensitivity knob for the power steering unit. How much power? Steering wheel's on and centered. We have our switch panel, power, start, and of course, you need to be able to charge your phone. So this thing's ready to go, minus, oh, I don't know, this big thing right here that's supposed to be a transmission. And right about here is where this project took a wrong turn and hit a wall. Well, figuratively. After initially waiting months for a custom transmission built by none other than Monster Transmission, we had problems with fitment from our very first attempt. Right out of the box, the input shaft was peened over and wouldn't allow the torque converter to fully seat. Not a good sign of things to come. 
Then, after pressing out the old pilot bushing and realizing the pretty new case mount shifter we just installed wouldn't align with the hole in the tunnel, the transmission finally fits, but the torque converter studs won't line up with the holes in the flex plate. Turns out, those were damaged right out of the box as well. Pack it up and send it back for warranty and again, wait for parts. Finally, the torque converter arrives and the transmission can be fully installed. After fabricating brackets for the shifter that didn't want to fit, and drilling new holes in the frame for the rear mount that didn't line up, the transmission was finally installed. Well, physically. The kickdown cable was only set up to work with the carburetor, so I had to modify the bracket at the transmission, as well as custom machine and bushing for attaching to the throttle body. Time to fill the fluid. That should be easy, right? Wrong. The dipstick tube wouldn't clear the custom fiberglass body and had to be modified. Finally ready to crank and the ignition switch we were supplied burnt out, so I had to source one with a higher amperage rating. Okay, now it's finally ready to back out under its own power. I'm doing it! I'm really doing it! Well, having the ability to stop the car first might be helpful, so let's fix that too. First test drive didn't even make it around the block and the fuel pump died. So we repaired and rerouted some kinked fuel lines and set off for another attempt. Unfortunately, with similar results as the previous. I made it much further this time before the fuel pump shorted out from, surprise, more faulty wiring. <coughs> Due to all the reverse engineering, I sent the car over to a local transmission shop I work with to help fine tune the kickdown cable and it came back on a tow truck. Fuel pump yet again. So now what do I do? Ready. Ready. Hey, hey Justin. What? Wanna hear a joke? What? No, can't you see that I'm working? Well, I find that in, in stressful times such as these, we can use humor as a vehicle to try to escape momentarily from the woe. Oh my, if it will get you to shut up, just tell me the damn joke. Look man, I'm just trying to help out here and if you don't want to accept that, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you're right. This, this is a little stressful. I could use a good laugh, but let's hear it. All right, that's the spirit. Here we go. H how many fuel pumps does it take to fix a car? Really? You wasted my time for that? <laughs> we return you now to your regularly scheduled program. So we reached out to Holly, who makes MSD, Asked him what's the deal with the fuel pump, got the specs on it. Turns out whoever built the car put the fuel pump in the wrong location. It cannot draw fuel. It has to be below the fuel pump level. So we relocated the fuel pump from way up here above the, the tank, made this little bracket. So that way the fuel pump can now sit at the bottom level of the gas tank. It'll gravity feed. It will no longer have to suck fuel. It can just push it. So our rewire job fixed the fuel pump for our short test drive. However, when we were doing the longer test drive, about 30 minutes, or that's when it finally died, found out that it has nothing to do with the wiring. It has to do with the location. So finally, I, I, I don't, I'm hesitant to say this because of what happened before, but this should be the last fuel pump, the last adjustment, the last time this thing is on the lift. We even put a battery in it so we don't have to jump it anymore. This thing should drive away under its own power, not on a ramp truck. That's the plan. All right, I don't know if this is jinxing it or not, but I'm saying it right now. This is the final test drive of the Healy. We're doing this right now.
was supposed to be a nice and easy little retrofit for this car it turned out to be a, a nightmare and a disaster of redesigning somebody else's mistakes and digging through basically somebody else's build that's kind of how it goes sometimes but i'm happy to report finally running 100 percent shifting great it's time to get this thing to the customer's hands so that we can still enjoy a little bit of good weather maybe even get the top down so let's get this thing out of here and until the next one hopefully not another one of these though we'll catch you later